Thank you, everyone, uh, for everyone that had a chance to come out this evening. Uh, we totally appreciate it. And yes, I am going to talk about continued business education. And um, a man who is of sound mind is one who keeps the inner madman under lock and key by Paul Valerie and the CEO of you. It's one of the uh, books. Oops, I forgot to grab them. But okay. So our businesses will never grow larger than our own uh, self image. So. I'm going to go ahead and wait for you guys to finish. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we've all heard about, uh, how many of us here have heard about like IQ, right? We all know about IQ. We take an IQ test. How many here have heard about EQ, like your emotional quotient? Okay. A couple people. So um, we've all heard about the high IQ initial intelligence quotient. We've all, we've all seen like geniuses that have had been like, like off the chart smart, but have never created any type of major success in their life. And a lot of times that's because they have a high IQ, but they do have a very low EQ. So emotional intelligence is the ability to monitor one's own self, one's own and other people's emotions, to discriminate between different emotions and label them appropriately, and to use emotional information to guide thinking and behavior. So uh, studies have shown that people have with high Emotional intelligence have greater mental health, exemplary job performance, and more potent leadership skills. Markers of EI, emotional intelligence, and methods of developing it have become more widely uh, coveted in the past few decades. In addition, studies have begun to provide evidence to help characterize the neural mechanisms of emotional intelligence. <laughs> So anyhow, basically, just basically saying that, just really having a high IQ, and one of the things that I've always learned is that if we don't have a high self-image, and our businesses will grow as high as our self-image will allow it to grow, okay? True. So how do we increase our self-image and increase our emotional IQ? A lot of that is through reading, continuing education, and actually what we tell ourselves. So how do you do that? So um, my question is, what type, of books are you reading? So a lot of us will read books that are talking about our specific craft, as well as our um, you know field and so forth. But are you reading anything that is going to help develop who you are as a person and help develop your self image in addition to that? A lot of times people say, "Oh, I don't read after college. I don't read after high school. I read so much." But education never stops. It just never quits. So, um, many do, but what about the book that grows how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your business, and how you feel about others? That's a key thing. How do we feel about others? Because when we're growing businesses, we're all in sales. All of us are in sales, whether we're getting a job, whether we are meeting a significant other, whether we are, whatever it is that we're doing in life, meeting new friends, developing relationships, we're all selling ourselves. And um, these are the extra, the ones that takes us from being good to great. If you notice uh, athletes who have had all the talents and skills, I was just talking to one of my friends and her son is a quarterback, he's a junior going into his senior year, and he has complete talent, but he doesn't put in that extra umph to take him to that next level. That's gonna get him into the pros, that's gonna get him into college. And so he needs to learn that within himself that it's not all just on your own talent, but you have to put in that extra work as well. So uh, reading and continuing education is the core to everything you need as your foundation to, make you, to take you to the next level. And Henry Ford once said, I'm not the smartest, but I surround myself with competent people. So when it comes to taking our businesses to the next level, we can't all be an expert in everything. That is why we learn from the expert and surround ourselves with the experts. So there is so much free information on the web. However, it is very scattered and helpful. So if you know what you're looking for, in life there are things that we know about ourselves that others don't, things that others know about ourselves and we know, things that others know that we don't know about ourselves that are yet to be discovered. So if you ever notice someone will tell you something about yourself and you'd be like, I never knew that about me. That's how I came across to you or that's how you perceive me. I would have never known that I came across like that. So that's reading. It helps us develop and understand things like that about ourselves. So 
We are actually, so Connecting Atlanta, we help companies connect, educate, and expand, and we are gonna be helping companies um, through, we did connecting events last year, so now I partner with uh, business, other business connecting events now, and we're starting education this year. And so one of them is gonna be, the two, two strongest foundations that I think of in any kind of business plan or a business, since I've been in sales for over 10 or 12 years, um, is marketing and sales. Uh, that helps to grow your company, helps consumers to know who you are, and uh, getting yourself out there. And then we have an image expert that's going to be coming up, and uh, she'll be talking about how you present yourself uh, to people. And then the other thing is finances. So finances is the core to your business, and uh, that's going to tell you if you're going to actually be able to survive outside of corporate America, and uh, whether you're going to be able to live your own dream instead of living somebody else's. And so, in our financial courses, we're going to, you're going to be able to learn the practical financial concepts and skills you need to make better management decisions. In today's business world, our success and effectiveness may well depend on how well you can handle the numbers. Having basic skills in finance and accounting will positively affect all parts of your company, including managing people, setting short and long-term objectives, and controlling costs. Without a doubt, the ability to understand and speak this universal language of business is a skill no manager or business owner can afford to be without. So, and then just the other thing that we'll be doing is just stuff on, um, on marketing and so forth. So, and executive summaries, and a friend of mine put this together. He has a master's in marketing, so I asked him to put together a core competency for me, and uh, we'll have educators coming in and talking at the workshops. But one of the things was having an executive summary for your marketing plan. And I was like, oh my God, you know, you think about that for your business plan, but then you're like, I need to have that. It's just part of that intricate foundation to your business. So um, that's what I had to talk about. Does anyone have any questions at all or uh, any questions? <laughs> Did you say you have a workshop coming up? We do have a workshop coming up about finance in April. So I do have a notepad over here and then I'm getting people's email addresses and folks phone numbers and so forth, and then that way, and there's zip code so I know where they're located because Atlanta's so big and people like to go within a 10 mile radius because <laughs> I know I don't like to drive outside of it. <laughs> so, so we have workshops in different parts of the city, so. Any other questions? Connecting Atlanta. And there's a Facebook group for it? Connecting in Atlanta is the Facebook group, thank you. It's facebook.com slash group slash connecting in I-N-A-T-L. And we have about, I think, 4,700 members are close to that right now. So, yes, sir. What would be the number one financial advice that most people need to hear? The first thing they need to do? That's a great question, and I have someone that's going to be teaching that class. <laughs> but for what I would think is, is uh, probably, and you probably know the answer to this. That's why you're asking it, and you want other people to hear it. Is that correct? So uh, probably the biggest thing is understanding your numbers, understanding what your costs are, and then understanding what you need to make in order to make your profit and have a lifestyle. Did I get it right? <laughs> it, depends. <laughs> it depends, right? Yeah. But I would think in understanding your numbers, and I'm a very goal-oriented type of person. I'm like, okay, well, this is the type of revenue I need to bring in. I write it down, write your visions on tablets. I write it down and then I say, okay, this is what I need to make to be able to have the lifestyle and the income that I want to have. There you go. The why. Yes. The why. And so that's that's the key. Because if we are just doing things for the dollar bill, as much as people love to have ten thousand dollars coming to their bank account, it doesn't mean anything if there isn't that passion, that drive, and that why that why behind it. Marketing, understanding your analytics.